Good evening. Well, good afternoon. I'm Pastor Charlene Keat with a journey into Wholeness Cathedral Worldwide Ministries. I just wanted to get on here uh, for a brief moment where I'll be with you for a little while because you have not seen me on regularly. And I just want to get on here and share with some um, the reason I hadn't been on. And I want to thank some, say thank you from the bottom of my heart, the ones who have called to check on me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I am here just to share a brief message with you. Um, as some may know, I have had brain surgery. And um, in that brain surgery, I had the pituitary, the pituitary was totally removed. Um, the pituitary gland, which makes the hormones that go throughout your body. So um, I do hormone replacement therapy. So that's why you haven't seen me. My balance have been kind of off. I was getting a little confused because um, the endocrinologist said I could go taper down. And unfortunately, I taper down too much. So I thank God for your prayers, for praying for me having me in your thoughts, the ones who responded to the message that I sent out there. But I thought I would just get on here and say, personally, want to thank each and every one of you for loving on me, my family, all of you, till I could get back up and, you know, stable again. So thank you so much. Um, I know a lot of people are in church, so you probably would not be on here, but that's okay for right now. But I thank God for the ones that come back. Again, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do have a word from the Lord. I'm going to be brief with it, but I wanted to just say thank you and um, let you know that I'm doing much better. I'm still taking it easy. I tell you, I just felt overjoyed with the ones that reached out to me. You just don't know. I thought I would get on here and say that. Amen. Amen. So give me a minute where I get the message, get your Bibles, and maybe some of you want to come back and listen. Some may want to come back and listen, but I'm just going to briefly be with you today. I'm still getting my strength up to um, come on like I was like I was coming on before, but we know God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. And I know that Isaiah 53 verse uh, 5, what is it? Help me, Holy Ghost. It's in the book of Isaiah. It says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, we were healed. And I also know, beloved, that in this life, we will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. He said he overcame and we will too. So I'm believing God that I will too. I give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. But I have been a little off balance. And I remember the last uh, Sunday that I was on, I noticed something different. I'm glad I noticed it. Because uh, I was having a hard time getting it out, getting the message out. But I'm back here today, ready to just do a short study with you. Hallelujah. If you get your Bibles, um, and then some will probably come back later. But get your Bibles and turn to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, hallelujah. We thank God for the people of God. I have to be obedient to the word. I mean, to the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. To crucify the flesh. Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. I just want to give some encouraging words. 
and just share some things that the Lord had been sharing with me when I was down um, totally, when I had to take a step back for a minute. But I also want to thank Pastor Dicker. He's doing an awesome job. Hallelujah. We thank God for him stepping in the gap, standing in the gap for me. Amen. So turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is what I'm going to be studying today. And my title, the message that the Lord so graciously have given me, the title, we must keep our minds transforming in Christ. We must keep our minds transforming in Christ. Romans 12, verse 2, it said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. The mind has to be renewed. It has to constantly be, in, be transforming that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. You'll be more in tune with the will of God for your life. If you continuously allow your mind to be transforming on this walk with God, uh, it said, discern what is will, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, beloved, Paul is encouraging the Christians to respond to God's mercy and his forgiveness. He wished that none should perish, that all should have eternal life. But he does this by offering his uh, sacrifice for sin. Amen. Beloved, this verse also suggests that the way we think determines who we are and how we live. The way we think determines who we are and the way we live. The word renewal implies that one must have a change of mind. So this means that people should change their thinking from ungodly thinking to godly thinking. And his ways, because he said his ways are not our ways, neither his thoughts are our thoughts. Beloved, the only way uh, to replace, hallelujah, the world's way of thinking is with God's truth. Mm -hmm. And what is God's truth? It's his word, which is the Bible. Amen. You agree with me? Say amen. In addition to get our minds transformed in Christ, remember these two points. I want you, I've written down two points here. We must realize struggles will come. Since I've been down, I do realize that struggles will come. And when they do, we must search the scripture, search the word of God. But when you're down like I was and I was unstable, my thoughts were because the, the hormones were not going in the body, the hydrocortisone and the thyroids is off and all of this is off and realizing that they didn't take part of the pituitary, but took it all. So if I get off too much or get down too low, I will have some problems. So that to me, that was some suffering going on. But although the suffering occurred, we must search the scripture. And I, of course I couldn't. So I had to rely on what was on the inside of me. Amen. I had to re rely on the word of God that's hidden in me. He said, he, Joshua 1 and 8 said, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night that you may observe to do all that's written in it. Then you will make your pros way prosperous and then you will have the success. We must meditate day and night on the word of God, transforming our minds. So during this time of struggle uh, with my health, although I was struggling, you know, I wanted to get up. I wanted to be on and I enjoyed teaching, but I had to rely on what was in me to encourage me. The second point to get our minds transformed in Christ, we must be ready spiritually for what's to come. We must be ready, my sisters and brothers, for what's to come in this earth, in this, in this earth realm. You say, Pastor, what is to come? Well, I'm glad you asked. Beloved, what we must realize is that the Antichrist is here. Mm -hmm. 
the antichrist is here and he's he's who god he's bringing about mental warfare he, he's bringing it about it so that so with this with that being said that the antichrist is here things are going to take place good or bad bad keep walking with me and it's not going to get any better for the christians it's not going to get better Daniel 7 verse 25 puts it like this as it relates to the Antichrist. He said he will speak words against the most high God and wear down the saints of the most high. And he will tend to, to change the times and the law. And he will tend to change the time and the law and they will be given into his hand. So the times and the law, I hope you're watching the political conventions. I hope you, you are educating yourself. The times and the law, and they will be given into his hand for a three to three and a half years. The Antichrist. Beloved, as I said, the Antichrist, he's, he will speak against, uh, 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 against Christ. Therefore, he will come against the believer. He will come. If you believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he will come against you. Anymore, even the more. Luke 17, verse 20 through 21 makes us aware that the Pharisees asked when God, when God's kingdom would come, not knowing that he had already come. See, these are Pharisees. They're right up there in the church. But they didn't even recognize that he had come. Beloved, what we must realize is that God's kingdom has no geographical boundaries. Mm -hmm. His kingdom doesn't. He created all things. It begins with God's spirit living in people's lives within relationships. See, that's what we got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. that the, a person's relationship with us, our relationship, more importantly, with God. Sisters and brothers, we must look at what God is doing in people's hearts. And the only way we can be in tune is being in a relationship with who? With our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Verse 21 of Luke 17 says this, it says, now is evident of this. What I just talked to you about, this is what it said about in, in Luke 20, uh, uh, verse 21 of Luke 17. It says, now having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, he replied, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed or with a visible display. Nor would people say, look, here it is. Or there it is, for the kingdom of God is among you because of my presence. So the kingdom of God is among us because of his presence. Because the Pharisees didn't even recognize him. Amen? Say with me, my mind must continue to be transforming. My mind should be continued, continue to be transformed. So I can be spiritually ready. For what's to come. My mind must, must be continued to be transformed. So I can be ready. Spiritually ready for what's to come. And during this time of intense persecution. Because persecution is coming. The enemy, he doesn't care about you. But God is going to allow it. So during this time of intense persecution, we must remember that it is not the person, but a bad spirit. It's not the person. In other words, if you're dealing with a person that's, I don't know, what's a good example? You're dealing with a person that's busy about it and everybody's been doing things that offensive to you and you talk to them continuously and they don't listen and it's not them. Because it's rising up, all these different things that's going on in the world that's negative, people killing people. You know, I heard Pastor Dicker talk about the seals being opened. They are exactly, they, that, is, that is exactly what's happening. The seals are being opened. 
So, so you're going to see the white, the white, uh, I mean, the, uh, first seal open. That's the white horse. And we witnessed that during the opening of the Olympics when they came out on the white horse and they really, they blasphemed Jesus Christ. And they had the transvestites standing up there, I mean, sitting around, you know, like symbolizing the Lord's Supper. The red horse is when people going to lose, it's going to like, people going to, it's going to be like they lost their mind. They killing people and they doing all kinds of things. You just say the wrong thing. They come back and they want to tear you down and ready to beat you down. That's a very intense spirit. The, that's the red horse which is the second seal. The third seal is the black horse, which is where poverty and lack and people are stealing to get food or just going into stores and taking what they want. So we in that season. So it's not going to get worse, but for the believer, Antichrist, God is going to allow, yes, he's a God of love, but he wants us to obey him, to do what thus saith the Lord, and we will feel it. I have felt it. And any pastor that get up and say they're not feeling it, you need to question a little bit. You need to go back to God and say, God, what is, you know, if you're aware, because God is a good God, but he's also a God of judgment. So we must realize that it's not the person. It's not the person. The Bible said we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and high and heavenly places. And that's found in Ephesians 6, 12. This, and this is what it says. I gave you one translation, but it said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved, this passage talk about flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Flesh and the blood. However, this flesh and blood are demons over whom the devil has control. These have these flesh and blood are demons over whom the devil has control. They are mere, merely uh, fantasies. They, excuse me, they are not merely fan fantasies. They're real. Demons are real. And they go to and fro seeking whom they devour, who they can use to get next to you, to the believer, to tear you down, to stop you. Because they know that they only have a certain amount of time. My sisters and brothers, their goal is to, to defeat Christ's church. And when we believe in Christ, they will try every device to turn us away from Christ and back to sin. I have a question for you. What is going on now? What is going on now? Beloved, we, one, uh, when we accept Christ as Savior, we are on a spiritual battlefield. But remember, we already have the victory. If we we in Christ, we already have the victory because Jesus paid the price for our sins. If you agree with me, say amen. But it is a constant fight. We, we must have the Holy Spirit. We must allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. Say with me again, daily transformation of the mind is vital. Say with me one more time, daily transformation is vital. Transformation of the mind through the word of God. We have to, you know, a person who doesn't read the word of God makes me question if they're really saved. Because he keeps our mind in perfect peace who stayed on him. He's keeping my mind in perfect peace as I go through these, these uh, ailments. And I would not kid you, it has not been easy for me. It's been very, very challenging. Beloved, the sad thing is that the attacks will come from religious people. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of people, you know, we are the church. Yes, we should go to church and get uh, built up and edified. The Bible says, fail not to assemble ourselves with one another, but exalting one another, even the more as we see the day approaching. Yes, but the church, you are the church. But in order to grow, you have to, you should go to church. You should learn the things of God, but make sure you're being led uh, uh, by God where to be. 
And then it's saying because it says that the religious people would try to uh, 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 wear you down. Where the believer, the one that was that's in a relationship with God, you're going to see religious folks coming against uh, 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 the, the believer. And you say, Pastor, wait a minute. They both religious. Yeah, they're religious. But I'm telling you, I mean, uh, religious, uh, but one is religious like the Pharisees was, and one has a relationship with God. You remember Joseph. His father taught him the things of God, which helped him in a difficult time in his life. See, people will be with you when you're up, but when you get down, that's when you really know who's your friend. The way that the enemy would come, he come where he brings mental warfare mental warfare, and I'm going to make myself transparent. As I've been going through this, there were times when I would lay there and it seemed like fear would grip me. And I said, what in the world? I said, God, you said you didn't give me the spirit. I didn't have time to grab my Bible. You didn't give me the spirit of fear, but a power, God, love, and a sound mind. I need you, Lord, and praying and seeking God still didn't move. Enemy didn't move, because see, that's the time we're in now. Call my pastor friend. We prayed together, touched in degree, because the Bible says one will put a thousand to flight, but two will put ten thousand to flight. The Antichrist is here. The one that tried that comes to deceive and make you think there is not a, a God. Beloved, we must keep our minds transforming. Romans 12, 2. I do not be and do not be conformed to this world any longer with superficial values. I'm reading from the Amplified. It gives more detail and customs, but be transformed, aggressively changed as you mature spiritually by renewing your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what will, what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. We have to stay before the Father. We have to know what he desires for our life. He created you. You say, Pastor, I came through my mother's womb. Yes, he gave you that mother and father. He knows all about you. Put your hands in his hand. Don't turn it loose in these times. The Bible said, as we just read in Romans 12, verse 2, it is vital that we keep our minds transforming in the word of God because it comes a time when we get sick in our bodies or might go through something. We can't reach for that Bible, but we can reach deep down inside of us. And what we've been meditating on, as Joshua so graciously told us, as I said earlier, but if we don't believe and trust him, we're going to have some hard, crucial times. Hallelujah. And it's going to be so sad because it's going to be religious folks, just as in the Bible. But see, that's why we read the Bible so we can be aware. But that doesn't mean we don't pray for them. For the ones who come against us, we continuously pray, even when the flesh say, I want to get you, I want to do something else. But God is a faithful God. There is no one like him. I thank God for the ones that have come on this afternoon. I thank God for the ones who will come, will look at this later. I pray that this has been a blessing. This short message has been a blessing to you and have encouraged you. Continue in God, no matter what it looks like, no matter what you go through, God is faithful. He is just. Look at me. He's just going through, but the greater one, his spirit, <laughs> hallelujah, resides on the inside of me. And his name is Jesus. And he said in his word, beloved. If you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you before the Father which is in heaven. So get your mind. Begin. If you haven't started, start it. Today is the day for you to be, make a conscious decision that you're going to allow your mind to be transformed continuously. 
If you don't know him today, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. After listening to this message, I believe. I believe that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for me. But on the third day, he rose again. I believe it. I confess it and I believe it by faith. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Welcome into the body of Christ. If you've been on this journey a while and you've allowed pressures and different situations and circumstances to get the best of you, Acts 3 verse 19 says this. He said, repent. Paul said, so repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing will come from the Lord. You know, many people might make us promises and they might not keep them. But my God, he will, he will always keep them. He will never leave you or forsake you. He always keeps his promises, no matter what. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I wanted to get over here and encourage you, give a short encouragement message to you all. And again, thank you all for praying for me. I have been at it and I'm still not totally there, but I thank God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Until next time, be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Have a blessed rest of the week.